By the way, that was uh, Pete Townsend there on those guitar licks underneath. Don't know if you heard the who. Underneath Another there. PT. Very often when I tell people my name, they say Pete Townsend. <laughs> And I say, no, it's Thompson. I, I am not a hearing-impaired guitarist <laughs> for The Who. Yes. John McClellan has no problem with his hearing as he joins us now in the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Johnny Mack, how are you, pal? Doing well, Pete Townsend. Doing well. I, do have <laughs> I, wish, I, I wish I could play the guitar like him, right? <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of, of the great one of the great quotes I ever heard once. When Prince passed away, unfortunately, they asked Eric Clapton, uh, who is the best guitar player of all time, and he said, I, I don't know, ask Prince. I, I thought that was a great quote. A lot of great guitarists out there and a lot of good football reporters. And you certainly, sir, are one of them, the Eagles and the Redskins this Sunday at the Link. I know you've been on the show repeatedly to talk about that matchup. I guess I'll start with the news that came out today that as he readies for his return, Lane Johnson's come out and made comments that it's his fault. He let the team down. First of all, did you see his comments? And second of all, what did you think about them? Well, it is his fault. Yeah, so I agree with them. There's no question about it. Uh, I mean, we can argue, unfortunately, because of the clandestine nature uh, of the NFL's policies, whether it's substance abuse or performance-enhancing drugs, you never have the full accounting of the story. You have to take what's given to you. And according to Lane, uh, of course, from the beginning of this, it was a tainted supplement. But we have no actual proof of that. Uh, in either or, uh, no matter how he thinks he was wrong, the, the policy is pretty clear that you're responsible for what you put in your body. Uh, and he put the wrong thing in his body, however it got there. Uh, and he was suspended for 10 games, which affects him on a personal level because obviously he signed that big-time extension, uh, and that money is no longer uh, guaranteed. That's what he's fighting in court for. Uh, with the NLRB and, and things of that nature. But from a football perspective, obviously this team was a heck of a lot better when he was out there, uh, and they've completely fallen off the rails without him. Now, I don't think it's completely because Lane's not here, because I've said it time and time again. I, I think uh, as you got more film on the Philadelphia Eagles, opposing defenses were going to realize pretty quickly there were no playmakers, uh, and it was going to slow down even if Lane was here. But they would have been better. And, hey, if you're a game better, right now you're you're in a heck of a lot better position to make the postseason. So it, it's, it's an issue, and it is his fault. John, with Lane Johnson out, the Eagles have had to do, obviously, some big-time tinkering on their offensive line when they played the Redskins early in the season. Uh, big V, a big part of the storyline, but uh, all the moves that they've made, Big V, Alan Barbary, uh, Wiz, Stefan Wisniewski, uh, all of them come uh, at the uh, puppets. The guy at the puppet strings is Jeff Stoutland, and I saw a piece today that said that of the assistants that were retained, Jeff Stoutland might be the MVP that was the holdover from Chip Kelly's staff. Yeah, I mean, they've done a pretty good job, and that's the understated uh, point of this. Overall, I, I, I constantly talk about, and I understand how fan bases get myopic, and, and I understand that. But when you look at Philadelphia Eagles offensive line, even without Lane Johnson, versus some of the lines in this league, even with good teams, and you saw it up close with Minnesota, uh, Seattle, believe it or not, has one of the worst offensive lines in football. Uh, so it, it, it's a crisis in the rest of the league, offensive line play. And as I said, the Eagles with Lane Johnson, they they have a top 10 offensive line in this league. And even without them, they've been in the top half. So it could have been much worse, and, and Jeff Stoutland deserves a lot of credit. Unfortunately, you happen to play in the division that has the best offensive line. And when you see that Cowboys offensive line, you tend to get a little jealous. John, when you look at uh, Carson Wentz, he lost three games as a college starter. He's lost seven so far this season in his rookie year in the NFL. When you see him around the facility, you see him after games, 
how much is this losing affecting him? It's not something he's he's really ever been used to. No, he's not. They never lose at North Dakota State. And even though it's a lesser level, it's still a fact that everybody who plays at that program is not used to losing. Uh, and, and, you know, I think he lost five times, maybe his entire college career. So uh, it's not a guy used to losing football games. But from his perspective, he's, he's completely optimistic. The, the one sort of twinge I saw was, was after uh, the performance in Cincinnati. I, I think he was a little frustrated uh, and he heard a, a little bit uh, of sort of brushback when he was talking and you typically, typically don't get that from Carson. Uh, and when he spoke yesterday, he was his normal effusive self, optimistic. Uh, and I think it's not a, it's not an act. I, I mean, that's just the way he is. And a lot of it is that the, the football mentality would start before the professional level. And, and coaches preach to always, you know, take things one step at a time on a weekly basis. And, and they preach the only thing that matters is the upcoming opponent. Don't worry about two or three weeks down the line. And he's generally one of those guys that, that has bought into that. When you look at uh, Nelson Aguilar, of course, his season has been uh, abysmal here, his second season in the NFL. Now, last week he did come back from his benching and missing the one game where he was a healthy scratch. And he came back and he didn't drop any passes. Granted, he didn't light the world on fire either. Where is Nelson Aguilar mentally, do you think? Has he turned a bit of a corner? You know, I, I don't know mentally because you can never get in somebody's mind. But I just know from the Eagles' perspective, they can't move forward with his lack of production. And they just can't. And here's how I describe it. You're right. It, it was a slight, it was baby step improvement, Scott. Uh, he didn't drop the football. Uh, it wasn't egregious uh, against the Bengals. But Carson Wentz had a higher average per reception than Nelson Aguilar. And, and I always... Uh, <laughs> And I always go back to the fact that in his first professional football game, Bryce Treg uh, trumped uh, Nelson Aguilar's career best receiving game. In his second game, in his first playing extensively, Paul Turner did it. Uh, it's it's time to cut the cord. Uh, I mean, when you don't have this lack of production at that particular position is killing. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles offense. And if you think about this team moving forward, forget about this season. You can't improve this season. We all know that. But you have to improve that position. And and where are you going to improve it? You know Jordan's going to be there. So either you got to find replacements for Nelson Aguilar or Doriel Green Beckham uh, and, because you know guys like Treggs and Turner aren't long-term answers. So the reality is Nelson's a nice kid. He tries hard, but for whatever reason, whether it's physical limitations, mental limitations, he has not performed at this level, and the Philadelphia Eagles can't uh, keep enabling. They have to improve at that position. John McMullen with us, our Eagles insider. You can find him on Twitter at, at JF McMullen. He's on 973ESPN.com as well. And, John, it looks like from the injury report today, you mentioned DGB. He's on there, abdomen, and Big V on there with the knee. Otherwise, I know this narrative yesterday that Matthews and Matthews were back, the law firm of Matthews and Matthews both returned to practice. So uh, looks like the Eagles are getting healthier at the right time. Yeah, I mean, that's big. <laughs> And that's not necessarily a, a great thing because, as I said, when you the reality is for this team, their best running back is Ryan Matthews and their best receiver is Jordan Matthews. Uh, so when they didn't have either of them, having had Ryan for a couple weeks, didn't have Jordan for last week, you know, it's difficult for that team to deal with quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers and, and Andy Dalton who were hot on those particular days. And whether you, you can criticize the defense some, there's no question because the cornerbacks uh, specifically were atrocious. And so was Rodney McLeod, by the way, uh, against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, but the Eagles are not equipped 
to win shootout games to begin with. And then when you take that law firm uh, of Matthews and Matthews that you mentioned, Pete, you take that away, and they're going to a gunfight with knives. I mean, they just have nothing offensively. Well, you mentioned the defense a little bit there, and obviously some of those players uh, uh, in the spotlight uh, for all the wrong reasons for their performance against Cincinnati. But also, it seems like some of the defensive guys had a little bit of snarl to them based on what Doug said on Monday. Uh, What's been the attitude of some of the defensive guys that you've talked to? Uh, we lost John for a second there. We'll get back with him in a minute. But Scott Grayson's here with me live at Chickies and Pete's inside the Tropicana of AC. John, uh, or Scott, as we, uh, we're talking about the defense and get ready to go in that direction. Just uh, about uh, Doug's comments and the guys that took exception to them. Yeah, I think Doug got, got a hold of that phone line. Didn't want to hear John's answer to it. So, yeah, <laughs> he, he hit dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's... I, I think, um, you know, as, as we've been hearing from, from different guests, and, and, I, and I'd be curious to hear John's thoughts when we do get him back up, that, uh, you know, it's it, 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 to me it feels like it's dividing that locker room a little bit. You have guys like Brent Selleck, you know, smooth, smoothing it over, and you have other guys like, you know, Malcolm Dick. It's like, well, I don't know who he's talking about. Uh, John McMullen back with us now on 97.3 ESPN. And, John, I was uh, before we lost you there, I was asking about uh, some of the defensive players having a little bit of snarl this week as they've spoken to reporters, and a lot of that had to do with Doug's comments on Monday. But what's been your experience uh, with the defensive guys this week and, and their attitude around the Novacare complex? Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think they're a little upset. Nobody wants to question. Uh, you can say – players don't perform well and and generally by and large they'll handle that okay Uh, some obviously won't but that's part of the job and most understand it but when you start questioning effort uh, I think a lot of them get their backs up and that's sort of what happened and I thought that was a mistake by the head coach and certainly something he did not learn from Andy Reid because uh, one of the things that defines Andy Reid as a coach is the fact that he he protects his players at all costs uh, by and large and takes the heat himself so I I thought that was a mistake and and the big you know sort of the big line of questioning at at the Novacare complex this week has been because of what Jim Swartz said earlier has been effort versus energy so we're, we're sort of like grasping at straw saying, well, they gave effort, but there wasn't enough energy. So bottom line is they didn't perform. <laughs> and they haven't been nearly as good defensively as they've had at times. But, you know, at one point, Jordan Hicks said this was, you know, a top five defense in the NFL. And statistically, they were. He said that before the Seattle game. Uh, and things have all gone downhill since then. Uh, and this team, let's face it, the way it's constructed, they need their defense to play at a high level to compete, and I think you've seen that. So I, I think everyone's disappointed uh, from Jim Schwartz on down about how they performed over the past few weeks, and, yeah, they're a little upset about it. Uh, John, when you look at this Eagles defense, Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, said that he's you know still cautious of the Eagles' defense. He said he's you know quote I feel like we've got our hands full with these guys this week. Um, this Eagles' defense clearly has not been playing good; hasn't been playing anything close to its best football. Can it flip a switch? Can it flip a switch and one week look as bad as it did against Cincinnati, and perhaps come out this weekend and get back to shape, back the way it used to play earlier in the season? Yeah, I, I, I think they can play well still, and I think they will. I mean, being at home is part of it. I, I think they'll play better just from that aspect. I, I think as a whole, I don't, I don't think the front seven, uh, even though the production hasn't been there, uh, I don't think that's been as big as an issue. Guys are still playing well. Uh, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox specifically. Jordan Hicks is having a heck of a year uh, at middle linebacker. Uh, I, I think they played well enough to win. I think it's the back end that it's a concern, uh, and the corners especially. Um, and I was a little surprised at how poorly Rodney McLeod uh, played against the Bengals, as I said. Uh, and, and he generally is not going to have two games like that in a row. Uh, so, there, yeah, there's a chance. Uh, but 
also, let's understand that Washington is very explosive offensively. So uh, they're capable uh, of scoring a lot of points, even if you do play well. And what we just tried to say is the Eagles are not equipped at this point to win shootouts. So they really need an, sort of an A-game effort from the defensive side of the football, and, and we'll see if they can put it together. John McMullen with us, our Eagles insider for 97.3 ESPN. He also writes for FanRagSports.com. He's an NFL columnist for them. And tonight, big one in the AFC West. John, the Chiefs and the Raiders. We'll have that on our air on 97.3. Uh, your thoughts on a Thursday night football game that actually means something? Yeah, it actually means something. Uh, it's a big game, obviously, because... If you think about the difference between winning the AFC West and, and being a wild card team, you could go from the first seed to the fifth seed. Uh, so obviously, uh, the teams in the hunt, and that includes the Broncos as well, who are still on the sort of the outside looking in, uh, they really want to get on top and, and, and win that division and be either the number one or number two seed. So uh, it's a very important game. I still, you know, it's nice to have, as you mentioned, Pete, a, a competitive game on Thursday night football, one that means a heck of a lot. But I still don't like the mechanics of it. You have a short week, uh, and obviously, um, you know, it, it, it's not easy to get prepared for those types of games, especially late in the season because you have so many guys banged up to begin with, and then they got to turn around and play so quickly. So. Yeah, it's good teams. It's a good matchup, but I still don't like Thursday night football. <laughs> John McMullen, I saw a note on uh, a flashby on the TV that Andy Reid has something up on the Chiefs website that if you print it out, it's basically an excused absence note to your teachers uh, for if you're a youth in the Kansas City, either KCK or KC Mo. Please let your kids go to the game and stay up late tonight because uh, and excuse them from school tomorrow because we need all the help we're going to get. So Andy making a public yeah, appeal for. <laughs> Go ahead. That, that, that's a huge thing for the Chiefs because it's, it's the Raiders that got to travel on a short week uh, to begin with, so that's difficult. And it's also, if you check the weather, man, it's really, really cold in Kansas City right now. So it, if you do want to put a, a few shekels down on that game, I like Kansas City. John McMullen, our Eagles insider and an NFL analyst as well. He joins us each day here on the Sports Bash. Thank you, Johnny Mack. We'll talk to you again tomorrow when Mike Gale's back in studio with me, and we'll talk to you more specifically about the Eagles-Redskins matchup. Thanks, John. Hey, thank you, guys.